It's training breakdown time, and we have two guests from overseas joining us today at the gym. Let's get into it. You're probably seeing some new faces on the training breakdown here on the channel. I'm Marcus Philly, but we've got Gary and Sheila joining us from the United Kingdom. These two own a gym out in the UK called Built Unique, and they have been promoting and using functional bodybuilding at their gym with their members for two years now. Coach Shauna, who you've seen here many times, programs functional bodybuilding workouts for their group fitness facility, and it has been an amazing success for them. They have built an amazing community, the movements, the training method, and the philosophy has been ingrained into their culture as a gym from day one when they opened, and the testimonials and the transformation that they have had have been profound, and that is why they chose to come all the way across the pond to visit us here in San Rafael, right outside San Francisco, take a vacation, train with us, learn from us, and we were very pleased to have them join. Now, if you joined us last week when Megan, Shauna, and myself all trained in my garage gym, you saw that we were doing prone rows, and guess what? It's a week later, so we're building upon last week. That's right, progression. We had to do a warm-up as we always do with Persist, and this warm-up included some bottoms-up kettlebell presses and some toes-elevated weighted toe touches. Now, both of these exercises I love for getting the shoulders and the thoracic spine and even the low back warmed up. We're going to be doing some pulling, and that toes elevated rounded back toe touch is a great way to get the thoracic spine working and also just open up the low back and the hamstrings. Just a great stretch overall, but predominantly getting that upper back to start feeling like it's opening, extending, flexing is a great thing to do when you're going to be doing a lot of pushing and pulling later in the workout. Now the bottoms up kettlebell press in the kneeling position, one of my favorite shoulder stability exercises. It's going to challenge your grip. You have to hold onto that kettlebell very, very firmly so that it doesn't wobble and it doesn't fall down onto your wrist. Then you're going to have to move with a lot of control. You can't have a lot of shaking going on. So as you're pressing up and down, your shoulder, your, your rotator cuff, some of the stabilizer muscles in the shoulder are going to have to work really hard, and that helps wake them up and get them ready for training. Now combine that with a little bit of cardio, a little bit of jump roping. And it's a perfect way to prep your body for training to come in a very short and efficient way. I think three rounds of one minute of cardio and then two other exercises that work joint mobility, stability, and get blood flow to the joint is a perfect recipe for a warm-up or call it a pre-fatigue before we get into the intensity of training. Now, last week we were doing horizontal rows with the dumbbells on a prone bench. Same thing today. I gave the option to do a cable row, and so I think Gary and Sheila were doing cable rows while the rest of us were doing prone rows on the seal bench or the flat bench, the prone row bench. And just like last week, what we did here was three building sets of 10 reps, meaning like I started with 50 pounds for 10 reps, then my second set was 60, and my third set was 70, and then I knew my top set was going to be 80 pounds, and I was gonna try and max out somewhere in the 10 to 12 rep range, which I did. And I tried to beat last week's weight, excuse me, last week's repetitions by at least one rep. So I think I got 11 reps at 80 pounds this week. Last week I got 10. And then for the fifth set, using the same weight as your top set, go for another max rep set. In this case, I only got seven reps and then finished the remainder of my reps for my fifth set with 60 pound dumbbells. So it was like a drop set at the end. Everybody did the same thing. Some of them on the cable machine the others of us on the prone row, and that was our first intensity strength lift of the day. Next up in training is the shoulder strength balance section. This is gonna be two movements that we superset back and forth that are great for building shoulder strength, stability, and movements that take us through a big range of motion. The first exercise was gonna be the kneeling landmine press. I like this particularly because with a landmine, you have some stability, meaning one end of the barbell is anchored, in our case, to the landmine attachment, or maybe in your case, it is wedged in the corner of the room. So you have a little bit of an anchor point, whereas the other end of the barbell is free to move almost anywhere you'd like. So 
Much like a dumbbell, you have the freedom of range of motion, but you have a little bit of stability from the other end of the barbell. This allows you to get into positions that you feel maybe with a dumbbell or a kettlebell might be a little bit vulnerable, but with a landmine, a lot more stable. I like the landmine kneeling press to explore range of motion on my shoulder, work on some stability, and work on getting into those, again, positions that I might not otherwise want to. And as somebody who has been recovering from some shoulder injury, some shoulder pain recently, this is my go-to exercise for overhead lifting so that I can have stability and not worry about getting into a vulnerable position. The second exercise with this dumbbell pullover. The dumbbell pullover we used last week and you saw on the channel in our training breakdown last Thursday. The dumbbell pullover is great for shoulder flexion. It's great for training the lats. It's going to target a little bit of the triceps. I like it for how it helps me open up my thoracic spine. So for those reasons, it's a great strength balance exercise. It's also a great movement for getting a good stretch in the lats. I love it for lat growth, hypertrophy, and strength. But more importantly, we did dumbbell pullovers last week. We're doing them again this week on the same day. This is basic progression principles. You do not need to change your exercises every week nor should you be changing them that frequently. Stick to one group of exercises or one movement pattern for six to 12 weeks until you stop seeing results. And in this case, I know my weight that we were able to use for the dumbbell, la dumbbell pullover last week. I'm gonna either try and progress my weight this week, get a couple more reps, have better control of movement, or maybe add an additional set. And today, since it's only second week of this build, I simply used the same weight and tried to do one or two more reps on each set. Okay, after we had finished our pullovers and our kneeling presses, it was on to another superset. Think of this as like the strength balance superset number two focused on elbow flexion and extension. That's right, bicep curls and tricep extensions. The two movements that we chose were the Bayesian curl and the kettlebell overhead extension. Both of these movements are focused on putting our muscles at a stretched position when they start, and then in the case of the Bayesian curl, really working on changing our torso angle to get a very shortened peak contraction at the top. I'll start by explaining a little bit of the Bayesian curl. The way this is executed is with a cable, or if you don't have a cable, a band that is connected low uh, or attached low on a squat rack or a pull-up rig. You stand up very tall and you let your arm extend behind you. As you curl up, it's tempting to stay in that same vertical position, but what will happen if you stay in that vertical position is that the cable will bump into your forearm. So instead, as you curl the cable up or the band up, you lean forward and that is going to bring your shoulder into a slightly different position than where you started, which shortens the bicep and helps get peak contraction at the top. So stand tall, let the arm go behind you, and then curl up, lean forward, get peak contraction at the top. The Bayesian curl, it's a unilateral exercise. Do one arm at a time, focus on getting a great contraction in the bicep on every rep. After you finish 12 to 15 reps per arm, it was moving over to the incline bench, where we did a tricep overhead extension. I talked about this last week, but tricep overhead extensions, I love for the stretch that they put onto the tricep and especially after we've done dumbbell pullovers, it's a great combination and it always leaves me feeling like I got a great tricep workout, a good pump, great muscle activation, and I'm always quite sore for the next couple days afterwards, which for me is one indicator that I'm getting a, tri a great tricep training session in and the feeling was mutual amongst all of the people in the gym on this particular day now moving into the last portion of training the functional pump conditioning we have conditioning workouts in just about every training track that we have in persist but some of our training tracks, like pump, which is what we explored today, are a bit more focused on hypertrophy. And as many of you know or have heard over the years, doing high-intensity conditioning is maybe counterproductive to building muscle. 
There are aspects of this that are true, and then there's aspects of it that are misunderstood. Conditioning doesn't always have to be counterproductive to building muscle. You can absolutely do lots of conditioning, aerobic conditioning, walking, and even mixed modal circuits and still build plenty of muscle. But you wanna be mindful of how you're executing these types of workouts. And that is what I bring to my pump style training program where the conditioning workouts or functional pump conditioning workouts are really designed and suited for being complementary to building muscle rather than antagonistic to building muscle. How do we do this? Well, we choose movements that one, target similar muscle groups that we've been training in the session prior. So something you might do on an upper push and pull day would be go and do a density finisher like 50 upright rows to get an upper body pump and overload that muscle group that you've been training earlier in the session. We can do that same thing in a conditioning format by selecting the right exercise that lends itself well to a continuous movement conditioning piece like this. So today we chose a kettlebell swing high pull, which if executed well is a great upper back contraction. And because we were performing roughly a hundred reps of each exercise, this was going to give us a lot of density contractions in our upper back. The second thing that you'll want to do when you're doing a functional pump conditioning workout is choose exercises that actually slow you down a little bit, that don't allow you to ramp up your intensity super fast, high intensity, Uh, threshold training can be slightly counterproductive if combined in a hypertrophy based training session, but something that's lower intensity, more in the aerobic spectrum that elevates your cardio or your breathing rate while you're performing great muscle contractions like these kettlebell high pulls has been very effective for myself and for our clients in our pump training program. So something like a weighted sit up, which is what we did today, that is going to definitely be a movement that slows you down a little bit. It's not going to happen super fast. You're going to have to pause to get into position. Some of the transitions between one exercise to the next will purposely slow you down. And when you do that, when you have a purposeful slowdown that keeps your intensity lower, doesn't allow you to get into that high threshold anaerobic zone and keeps the workout or the conditioning piece more aerobic in nature. So the complete reps on this particular conditioning piece started with kettlebell high pulls, then weighted sit-ups, and in between each round, you either were doing a set of double unders or getting onto a machine like the ski machine that Sheila was using for a certain number of calories. The numbers of double unders and calories remain the same on every round. It was either 30 reps or it was about six calories, and that was your transition from round to round. The first round was 20 reps, then 15 reps, then 10 reps, then five, and then back up to 10, 15, and finished with 20. I love this descending, then ascending repetition scheme in our conditioning formats. When we choose to do them, I always feel like the last three rounds really challenge me to push my limits on these density sets for my upper back in this case, or my abdominals in the weighted sit-ups. I hope you got something from this training breakdown. If you have questions, please drop them below in the comments. I'd love to engage with you on what you learned from this or what you're still curious about when it comes to pump training formats with functional bodybuilding. And as always, if you like this video, drop me a thumbs up, share it with a friend that you think might enjoy doing this style of training, and we'll see you next time.